2023 marks the 60th anniversary of Automobili Lamborghini. Surprisingly, despite making some of the most iconic cars like the 350 GT, the Miura and the Countach, this supercar giant from Italy has struggled to turn consistent profits for around 40 years. And it's all down to a lack of image. You see, its competitors in the supercar space, companies like Ferrari, Porsche, McLaren, Mercedes, all the way down to the likes of Ford and Nissan, all have one thing in common. Race pedigree. Winning and dominating races is nothing other than a way for a company to tell the world about the sheer engineering might that you as a customer may expect from their products, which sells more cars. This extra layer of desirability and publicity is what Lamborghini just didn't have. So despite finally finding stable ownership in the form of Volkswagen in 1998, Lamborghini had to find a way to turn around its image. Fast. In 2005, Stefan Winkelmann joined the company as their new CEO and he brought along with him an image building strategy that was so common and never seen before at the same time. Selling Hello Cars. The ultra rare multi-million dollar cars that came out as a direct result of that strategy are the reason why we perceive Lamborghini as a brand the way we do. Today, let's line up all those cars behind the starting line of Imola and go for a little race because we're unlikely to see something like that in real life. My name is Neil, welcome back to Hot Labs. The car leaves the line like a scolded cat, getting past the Reventon as if it didn't even exist and I am now cruising past the STO as well as the Gentinario Roadster. Going into the first braking zone for turn 2, the Countach in front of me decided to rear end the Veneno, quite an expensive crash if you ask me. The Countach however suffers massively at the exit of turn 4 and I sensed a chance of getting alongside it going into turn 5 and I couldn't. Also I massively misjudged its braking point. The Countach is heavy and I ended up having a contact. Coming out of turn 6 though, now was a chance to get past. This contact however is completely on the Countach. I left enough space on my left and it's always on the car rejoining the track to do so safely. Going around turn 7 however, the overtake on the Countach was now complete and I found myself in P4 chasing the leading trio of the AI Sesto Elemento, followed by the Sion and then the Veneno. All three of them quite some distance down the road, so let's talk about the cars in the meanwhile. Starting with the oldest of them all, the Reventon. Launched in 2007 in coupe form, quite some move if you ask me launching a $1.5 million car, right at the beginning of a financial crisis. Only 20 of them were made, followed by 15 roadsters launched in 2009. Going into this chicken, I tried a move on the Venano and it was going pretty smooth until the Venano decided to steer into me, coming out of turn 15. I didn't appreciate that move, but the Venano came out worse and I gained P3, so all's well. Anyway, coming back to the Reventon, it was mechanically identical to the then current Lamborghini V12 flagship, the Murcielago, albeit with 10 more horsepower with the Reventon Roadster, seeing an additional bump of 20 horsepower getting its engine from the Murcielago SV actually. What was different from the Murcielago were in the interiors, it had a digital gauge cluster which was inspired by the cockpit of a fighter jet and more importantly the exteriors which teased the design language that the company was going to go with with the upcoming Murcielago replacement, the Aventador. But above all else, the Reventon was technically the last new road car by Lamborghini that featured their famous Bizzarini V12 that was debuted about half a century ago with their first ever car, the 350 GT. The next car in this list is the car I am driving and also the car currently leading the race. Yes, the Sesto Elemento is actually the second oldest car in this race. It's 13 years old. Like the Reventon Coupe, it had 20 units built, each costing roughly $2.93 million and it's by far the most special and most ambitious out of all of these projects that Lamborghini had undertaken. For starters, take the name, Sesto Elemento means sixth element, which going by the periodic table is carbon. Now why would a car company famous for naming all of its cars after fighting bulls suddenly break convention and name one of its cars using a puzzling reference to carbon? Well, because if Lamborghini could figure out a way to manufacture windshields, seat cushions, tires and LEDs for its tail lamps out of carbon fiber, they would do it for this car. Apart from the engine, the gearbox and all of the other parts I've previously mentioned, little else in this car is not made of carbon fiber. The interior, as you can see, is bare carbon fiber. It doesn't even have seats. 
the driver and the passenger sat on padding stuck directly onto the carbon fiber chassis. And it's all done in the name of weight saving. The result is a 5.2 liter V10 powered four wheel drive supercar that weighs just 999 kilograms dry. With around 560 horsepower, it could do 0 to 62 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.5 seconds. It was also the only time Lamborghini made a multi-million dollar limited production Halo car using the V10 engine. Although I've included the STO in this race, it's not one of them. We'll get back to that car later. But chronologically speaking, the Sesto Elemento was followed by the Venano. Just like my Sesto Elemento being followed by the Venano, as you can see in the rear view mirror. It was launched back in 2013 to celebrate 50 years of Automobili Lamborghini. If that doesn't make it special enough, well, here are some numbers. It's by far the most expensive car in this race, costing about $4 million a piece. Only three of the Venano Coupes exist, followed by nine Roadsters, launched in 2014. Meanwhile, around turn 9, I finally succeeded in making the overtake I was trying to do for quite a while and gained P2, getting past the Sian. Breaking for turn 11, however, two of my wheels were on grass and I have no idea how I managed to keep the car between the white lines. It'll take me at least a few months, if not years, to gain enough skill to do saves like that reliably and repeatedly. Anyway, getting back to the Venano, it was mechanically based on the Aventador with pretty similar interiors, albeit with different colored trims and materials here and there. But the exterior was where it differentiated itself from the Aventador as well as from any other car in this race. If you ask me, it's the most radical looking car in this race bar none. Also with just 12 examples for the entire world, it's virtually impossible to know how fast it is around the track. But at least in Assetto Corsa, using similar tires, it's faster on a one lap pace than even the Sesto Elemento. Despite being road legal, the Sesto Elemento isn't. It's actually the only car in this race that's not road legal, but it's still using road legal tires, so everything is still fairish. Anyway, moving on to the Centenario, it was launched back in 2016, costing $2.3 million a piece. Again, just 20 units of the coupe followed by 20 roadsters, which is the car featured in this race. As the name suggests, it was made to celebrate 100 years of something. In this case, Ferruccio Lamborghini himself. It was his 100th birthday in 2016. The Centenario also debuted the vertical infotainment screen that later found its way into the Huracan Evo, although it never got into the Aventador range, although the Centenario itself was heavily based on the Aventador, with, once again, slightly different interiors and a lot different exteriors, although not as radical as the Veneno. The next two cars on the list, however, the Sian and the Countach were even more revolutionary. When the Sian was launched back in 2019, two years before the Countach, it became the first hybrid car Lamborghini had ever made. Now, it wasn't a plug-in hybrid like the Prius or even Lamborghini's own current V12 flagship, the Revuelto. The electric motors in the Sian were powered by a capacitor system, which yeah, couldn't store as much charge as a normal lithium-ion battery, but the capacitor could charge and discharge faster. Only 63 Sian coupes were made, a nod to 1963, the year Automobili Lamborghini started operations, followed by 19 Roadsters. The Countach, however, was not as rare, with 112 units. It was also basically a new body of the Sian internals, designed to be a modern interpretation of the original Marcello Gandini designed Countach from the 70s, which is probably why it's not as expensive as the Sian. It's about $1 million cheaper, coming in at around $2.6-$2.7 million compared to $3.7 million for the Sian. The final car today, the car many of you saw at the race start and probably went, what on earth is that car doing here, is the Huracan STO. And let me explain its existence here. Yes, it still bears the Huracan nameplate, which is actually the baby Lamborghini. And no, it doesn't have a seven-figure price tag or a two-figure production run. In fact, Lamborghini people say they are going to make as many as they possibly can. All the most estimates say it will run out at around 700 units, each costing around the mid-range by Lamborghini standards, coming it at around $325,000. Now going into turn 9 here, this being the last lap, this was going to be my final shot at P1. And I got it pretty much the same way I got past the C on a couple of laps back. Anyway, coming back to the STO, it's at least visually the most track-focused car Lamborghini has made. In fact, Lamborghini's current GT3 contender, the Huracan GT3 Evo 2, is actually based on the STO and not the other way around. 
It features a clamshell bonnet that Lamborghini calls the Cofango, the most powerful iteration of the V10 engine coupled with rear wheel drive, two massive nostrils on the bonnet, and a fixed wing that's at least visually much larger than the Performante and even looks much more extreme than the Aventador SV as well as the SVJ. When those three cars came out, Lamborghini screamed at the top of their voice about the Nürburgring lap times they achieved. Have you heard any claims about the STO yet? Well, what the STO is, is a celebration of the spine-tingling driving experience Lamborghini in general is known for. It's a celebration of what the brand is. It's not a competitor to its rivals. It's the pinnacle of the last surviving, unassisted, naturally aspirated Lamborghini supercar brought to more people than all of these other cars in this race combined. Talk about the perfect image maker. Oh, and P1 in the race, by the way. Nice. Gotta wait for the Reventon now. I'm just kidding, I didn't yawn. <laughs> so here are the results and nothing much to add here really apart from a couple of facts. First, the car number 7, the rank 7, uh, you see no name here. That's actually the Lamborghini Centenario Roadster. It's a problem with the mod that I'm using. Its name doesn't show up in the race results. And secondly, the Lamborghini Veneno. Despite being the fastest car, I mean the lap times won't reflect that uh, here. A 147.533, uh, around 2 seconds lower than my car. It doesn't represent the fact that the Venano is the quickest car in this uh, race. Not the quickest, uh, I don't know, the fastest on the track, whatever. The quickest in terms of acceleration and straight line speed is actually the Sion, which is exactly why the Venano couldn't overtake that car. P5 goes to the Countach, the LPI 800-4. Another hybrid car similar to the Lamborghini Sian, but it's slower mainly because the Sian is much more aggressive in terms of aerodynamics. The Countach is a much more clean looking car. P6 goes to the Huracan, not the Performante, it's actually the STO. I guess the guy who made that mod bears that car off of the Lamborghini Huracan Performante that's offered by default by Astro Corsa. But as it turns out in the process, he actually forgot to change the name. P7 once again goes to the Centenario Roadster and finally in dead last 59 seconds behind me and like 33 seconds behind the second last car the Centenario comes the oldest of these limited production Lamborghinis the Reventon. Here's the timetable one last time so if you wish to take a look at the base laps pause the video I guess. Again the Venano's lap is not representative of its true pace it does meet to low 145s usually but all the other cars are pretty on point. Well, that said, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below sharing your thoughts about this video. While you're down there, hit like if you liked it, share if you loved it. I've actually raced all the FIA GT3 class cars that Assetto Corsa offers by default, which by the way includes another Lamborghini, the first gen Huracan GT3. If you wish to see that video, that's right here. I'll see you there. Until then, hang on, drive hard, drive safe. Take care.